to talk you through the action. Stephen Thompson and John Robertson are with us. John was at Tyne Castle today to watch Hearts Against Dundee United. Commentary from Paul Mitchell. Well, as the teams come out at Tyne Castle, there'll be a hero's welcome for a man who's in the white of United today. But Rudy Scaccio will always be adored at Tyne Castle for his goals and for his cup final heroics. And the number on the jersey tells of his love for the Tyne Castle club. And a driver will chase. Russell to it. McGowan into Smith. McLean away. Back off McGowan. McLean's not defending that well. Chance for Sutton back onto Stevenson. Very messy at the back for Dundee United. And a cool finish from Ryan Stevenson. Brian McLean couldn't get this one away. It broke onto Ryan Stevenson, who cleverly finished, opened up his foot. And Hearts are ahead by 1 0. Ryan Stevenson on the score sheet. Douglas zips the ball in, Daly almost there, and McDonald can't hold it, off the post from Brian McLean. What a great ball in from Barry Douglas. Daly couldn't get enough of a touch, pushed away by McDonald. Long from Jamie McDonald, dropped through again, Keith Watson away. Hearts will gather, Ryan Stevenson with a snapshot. Cherniak with a simple save in the end. McGowan's long throw can cause problems and it comes on towards Dylan McGowan. Taken down, penalty. He was pulled down by the arm by Willow Flood. That's a senseless penalty kick to give away. McGowan away from him, a tug on the arm and an easy call for Craig Thompson. Great ball in from the throw, but Willow Flood causing his sight real problems. Ryan Stevenson scored from the spot against Aberdeen. Scores from the spot against Dundee United. It's a third of the season for Ryan Stevenson, a second of the afternoon, and a clinically struck penalty. John Rankin, industrious as always. On to Russell. Russell is a man on the overlap, cuts inside, goes for it himself. And Dundee United's top goal scorer. Sending her over the top. A signal of intent from Johnny Russell. Flood's corner. Returned by Zaliukas. Flood decides to keep it in. Whips it in again. Brian McLean was up. Up and over the top it goes. It's Johnny Russell who came out the worst on the bottom of that pile. It'll take a moment or two to get back up. It's Brian McLean. And a good position, get up ahead of John Sutton, but couldn't bring the ball down. Barry Douglas, always dangerous with the free kicks. John Sutton swipes at it, breaks back, that could be on to Scatchel. Keith Watson! United are back in the match. And it's a forwards finish by the fullback in fine style from Keith Watson. Came back to Rudy Scatchel, a hint of offside. And that's a great finish from Keith Watson. He certainly gets the benefit of the doubt from the assistant. Ball fired in by Rudy Scatchel and a lovely turn and finish from Keith Watson. And John McGlynn wants more urgency from his side, being out fought in the second half. Driver's corner, knocked away, Stevenson. McGowan tried to get there, comes back, it's on to Gordon Smith. Well, he fluffed his lines there, the flag didn't come up. And Gordon Smith had a chance here, he looked offside. He was offside. United would have had something to say if that had gone in. Driver decides to take it short. And the United, a little bit slack here. Deflected in Webster. Cherniak with a save from then the United's Cup winning captain of 2010. Nice clip in by Andy Webster. Launch long, comes down onto Russell. Russell moves through, down onto John Rankin. He's had a couple of hits this afternoon, John Rankin. Still to find a way past Jamie McDonald. As United continue the quest for the equaliser. 
And come back on to Brian McLean. McLean's long ball, misjudged by Zaliukas on to Russell. There was the chance the United have been waiting for. McLean over the top, brought down brilliantly by Russell, just over the top. John, signs of progress for Hart, seven points out of nine from the last three games into the top six. But what do you expect to happen with your old team between <laughs> now and the end of the season without the aid of a crystal ball? A crystal course. ball, uh, no, it's, it's been a, a wonderful um, effort from the Hearts fans. They've been absolutely superb. To raise, uh, it'll be around about 1.2 million from a share issue in seven weeks is astonishing. And they're, they're coming along in vast numbers. They're going to the games, they've done everything, they've, they've done their own fundraiser. So I, I think the big one could be the semi final if they were to beat Inverness, which will be one massive, massive task the way they're playing at the moment, then that could just about see them, if they continue the sales of the tickets then season, should see them OK, and then next year they'll come down to some self-sustainability. Dundee United seemed to like to give themselves a challenge, and, and it wasn't great defending from them, was it, uh, for Hearts' first goal? No, it wasn't, and uh, I think there's two things you look at here. The first one, the first rule defending, don't let it bounce. McLean's let it bounce, but I think Gunning could come round and give him a hand, but I tell you what, Credit to John Sutton, he's, he's, he's gone there, yeah. He uses his body out ever so well, his experience out muscles uh, McLean and it's a simple finish. And you're right though, Gunning could have dropped and given McLean just, just a wee bit more a couple of yards. And the, the, the first part's of the, the bit that will upset Pierre Houston because I think McLean could go and head it away it. or clear it. And he's let it bounce, as soon as he let it bounce, someone like Stephen here or John Sutton, that's all they need and he just muscled them out of it and gave Hearts a perfect start. That's the second successive weekend, Stephen, that Willow Flood has conceded <laughs> a penalty. If, if Peter Houston had any here to pull out, I think he probably would be. Every chance, yeah. I mean, I originally thought it was for pulling with his arm here, but if you just look at his leg, yeah. it, it, it clips. It's um, definitely the clip there. If you look yeah. at Willow Flood's left foot and McGowan's right foot there, yeah. that's the penalty kick there. And Craig Thompson's standing, and, and as we'll see, Willow Flood last week again. I don't this think you have to do anything here. If, if, Draper, if Draper can <laughs> score from there, yeah. or cut it back, uh, why he dives in there, I don't know. But, it's just, but that, he was like that today all day, he was giving away Nicholas fouls. It's in his fouls. character, Floody, you know, he, he is a wee kind of rat type player, he's always fouling and giving away free kicks, uh, but he just needs to watch not to do it in the box from now on. I was wondering if you were going to call him there for a minute, <laughs> <laughs> one worrying moment. A rat's maybe <laughs> no, no, I'm really joking. Um, Dundee United uh, reckoned they deserved more from the game, yeah. John, were they, were they right? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, the, the thing about it was, there's a chance, I mean, it just wasn't McLean's day, I mean, it's a, this is the ball, I said this to, to Stephen there, that, that, that they got put in here, they got the goal, but probably a wee bit fortunate because it looks like he may have just been yeah. offside, but trust me, Rob, Dundee United put a lot into this game today, and had Johnny Russell took the goal he got in the last, you know, the chance in the last minute, it probably would have been a deserved point because there was wasn't, much, finish. Uh, wasn't much between the teams, and this is the, this is the, the real chance, good first touch, it's there to be hit, it doesn't keep it down, but Peter Houston was really frustrated after the game because the, the highlights didn't quite show, but Dunyan had had lots and lots of pressure, but I've got to say, Hart's back four, McGowan, Webster, Zell Lucas and young Mike Hattie were absolutely magnificent in the way they repelled them, but United can feel hard done by because they, they put a lot into the game and I don't think they got the reward that they've been due in the last couple of matches. A lot of the pre-match build-up, Stephen, mm -hmm. was about Rudy Scatchell's return to Tankcastle. Uh, even his number was on the, the back of his shirt was on the, on the front of the programme. I right. suppose it guaranteed <laughs> that it was all going to fall flat. Well, uh, by all accounts, you know, he wasn't at his best in the game. Uh, and that sometimes happens if you've had a big build-up and there's a lot of expectation. He's maybe overthought it and, and maybe not had a great match. Um, but, you know, it just shows you he's, he's idolised by these Hearts fans. But I think that's going to come back and haunt him a wee bit. That that last bit there, I mean, the Hearts fans Clapping love him to death. It's during the game. It's, it's, what happened at that time? United had come out the trap second half yeah. really well. <clears throat> 51st minute, the Hearts fans' tribute was the 5 1 Rudy. And, he, and he's kind of waved to him when your team's 2 0 down. I don't think no, some of the United timing. fans would be too chuffed about that, and, and rightly so. But it, it, it's an innocuous thing, but I, I don't think. I think he should have just been saying, just ignore it. Maybe when he was substituted, or maybe after the game. Maybe uh -huh. acknowledge your fans there. I don't think he really should have been doing it during the match. 